welcome Dr. Fiona Jane Brown to North Sound 2. Tell us a wee bit about this book of yours. Well, it's my first non-fiction book. It's Hidden Aberdeen, named after the tour company that I run, Hidden Aberdeen Tours. And I'm actually on my way to WH Smith in the St Nicholas Centre, uh, where from one o'clock I'll be signing copies of the new book. This Hidden Aberdeen, um, as you say, is based on the tours that you've done, and you've mm-hmm. been doing them for quite some time. How did you get into the tour business? Well, Again, this was um, a lot of folk know that we've been in recession since 2008 and I had a job that I really, really loved actually down in Portsmouth in Hampshire and got made redundant uh, and had to come back to Aberdeen. And before I left, I'd been doing just little visits around places like Old Aberdeen with my friends who are photographers and telling them wee stories about these buildings. And when I come back, it's like, oh, you're doing more tours. And I'm thinking, that is a great idea. Rather than waste time looking for a job, I'll make my own job. And that's what I did. So since um, April 2011, when I ran my first official tour, uh, Hidden Aberdeen Tours has existed. Just give us a wee example of some of the hidden jewels. Well... Um, like yesterday I was down at uh, university campus there is an old burial ground there call, called the Snow Kirk and it's actually the burial ground is on the site of what was the first parish church there in 1498 and it was Bishop Elphinston who founded the university this was the church for the people and it was left in ruins after the Reformation and demolished in the 1660s but the local Catholic population kept on burying their dead there and then it became reconsecrated as a churchyard and it's just inside the gates of the halls of residence and college bounds and when I was a student there in 91 it was two years uh, into my degree before I realised that I'd been living next to a graveyard and again so few people know about the snow kirk there's also, now I hear a story, and I don't know if it's folklore or not, but apparently there's a walkway under Union Street. Well, um, you're partly correct there, Cammy. The What you see from um, the green are the storage vaults that are just under the back wine stairs. Oh. You can't get through at that point, but Carnegie's Bray, which I do mention in the book, if you come down there and go by the Tunnels nightclub, you will see that there's this sole car park that was used today by the businesses above. If if you walk right through the far end of the car park, you're actually underneath the far end of Union Street. It's because when Union Street was built, they were building over a medieval city with sort of hills and hows, and they bridged it. And instead of them all being open bridges, they turned them into storage vaults for the properties above. So that's why you can see some of them today. Is that right? Yes. There's also, my life revolves around pubs, as you're about to find out, <laughs> Oh, Henry's Nightclub, Mm -hmm. that was an old Masonic Lodge. I'm not sure about that, but I mean, Oh, Henry's, that was, it's Chaplin's now, I think it was called Uh last, is on um, what was St. Catherine's Hill. Adelphi is built on St. Catherine's Hill, which is an ancient... uh, geographical feature there and they cut part of it off to build Union Street so again um, don't know about the Masons being there, they were actually in a property in Futty's Meyer so it would have been in that vicinity uh-huh. uh, and they were the people that built the new inn which of course is what was there before now Archibald Simpson's pub which he, the architect, built as a bank so yeah they're saying around every corner there's stories attached to it Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you to gather all these stories? Well, for writing the book, it seemed to be quite a short time, just like a couple of months, but really since I started writing the tour. So you could say over the last um, three years I've been gathering information, but then I've been buying books about Aberdeen since I was still at school. I've been fascinated with it, uh, and it all started with being obsessed with the cinemas, um, and I had the book, um, one of the old books of old photographs, and said to my dad, how come Aberdeen had so many cinemas? And he says, oh, that was a long time ago, though. So when I was about 18 or 19, I made it my mission to go and find where all these cinemas were. So I'd already been thinking this idea. I never thought then that I would be doing walking tours, but that's that's kind of where it all started. So way back, (laughs) way back. We've also got tram lines. Old tram- I was just scooting through the book. There's, there's old tram lines. That's absolutely correct. It's more than Embra's got, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> trams is a bit of a laugh. Um, we have the tram lines down at the beach, just across from um, 
what was called the patio hotel it's called the double three now if you walk down the sort of old uh, broken track behind it you'll uh-huh. see what were the last of the sea beach tram lines and that's where they um, set fire to the fleet when they destroyed it in the 1950s and that story's in my book and it's actually the second point on the Fitty Tour uh, what I do as well and I mean not only do we have tram lines there we have loads and loads of tram rosettes which I don't mention in the book because I think nearly everybody is aware of them uh, and again you just need to look up most places where there were tram routes and you will see these rosettes which basically held the wires of the electric trams up so that's but correct what about some of the heritage reference the the, the the fishing days is there anything any story you can tell us there well um there's the foghorn <laughs> the the tori coo as folk know it the fact that the rocks around um, Girdle Ness and that are absolutely uh, vicious and of course they brought down the whale and ship the Oscar in 1813 and a combination of both lighthouse and foghorn over uh, centuries like tried to protect shipping there and again connected to the foghorn there's uh, the old fog bell in Fitty as well which was used before the foghorn which that, I mean, the current one that's uh, beside the lighthouse dates from just into the 20th century. So again, all those things would have been to help the um, the fisher folk, the merchant ships and everything not to uh, get um, smashed against the rocky coastline in storms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're way down to, is it? W.H. Smith. W.H. Yes. Smith. Yeah. yeah. Is that where people can get the book? Yes, uh, and also Waterstones, mm-hmm. and we'll be doing a launch party in about a fortnight. It's the 18th of June, it's a Tuesday night at half past six. If you want to come, just go along to Waterstones uh, and ask at the desk for a ticket. And I think a lot of people have been doing that, so uh, do do be quick, so you don't miss out on a chance for, listen, me blathering about it. <laughs> right, well, what I've got to do is I've got to get organised for the parade, so we'll mm-hmm. scoot into town, and if I've got time, I'll look in past the book as long as you got a cup of coffee from me. Okay? <laughs> I'm sure they'll be able to help you out. <laughs> Listen, uh, Fiona, thanks very much for coming in and telling us about the book. Um, the tours presumably are, g- you know, all year round? No, I start at Easter and finish round about September and of course we finish off the year with the big uh, Halloween tour. So anybody that's interested, just go onto my website, hiddenaberdeen.co.uk or the box office has all the details and also the tourist office has a list of all of the dates. So hope to see folk uh, soon. In fact, I'm doing one tonight, if I can just squeeze a plug in for that, uh, about the Aberdeen Blitz. And it's 70 years this year since that terrible air raid which killed 98 people. That's half past seven at the Northern Hotel tonight. Okay. Fiona, thanks very much. Thank I you. wish you well at the book signing. Thank you, Cammy. <laughs>